So I paint this as a very positive sign for the overall stock market. It equates to econo economic optimism, Scott. If you go back to 1980 and you look at the eight recessions, in each one of those recessions, it was the equity size class of small caps that led the economy out of the recession. So I, I can look beyond the U.S. I could see the economic optimism that's represented by the performance of the emerging markets and the Chinese equities market. And then I could look back here in the U.S. and I could see that small caps, they are squarely positioned to benefit most. Why? Because they have the interest rate sensitivity and they are viewed as companies that have weaker balance sheet. So a company in a weaker balance sheet in an environment as we've experienced over the last six months, where certainly we saw economic contraction as you're coming out of that, that's the place to be. It works for both small cap value and growth. They're both performing well. Understand healthcare is the primary sector within the Russell. So there is a large focus on healthcare, but it goes beyond that. It's energy, it's financials, and it's certainly a place that investors should be and should continue to be. Kerry, let's not forget, right? Small caps, mid caps usually lead on the way up, usually lead on the way down. So better if you're long the market that small caps and the Russell are going up in the manner in which they have. It's been pretty astounding. That's right, Scott. Now, what's particularly interesting about small caps, and, and I would define it as any stock between 300 million and 2 billion market cap, there are about 1,500 of those names total that are publicly traded in the U.S. And if we went back to September, the, the total value of all those companies was about $900 billion. Apple is more than twice that. If you look at Microsoft and Amazon, Amazon, each of those companies are much more than the entire universe of small caps. Therefore, in September, I looked at data. I talked about this a couple of weeks ago, I think, on the show. You could make the, the statement that a 5% decline in some of those mega cap stocks drove the small caps up 30 plus percent because that's all it would take to move the needle from 900 billion to where they are now, which is about 1.3, 1.4 trillion over the course of the last several months. I think that you, you need to understand that in some of these sectors, biotech, there is much more risk in some of those companies and they don't have a, a multiple because there's no earnings and financials and industrials will be much more likely to be selling at reasonable market caps. Yes, more risk, more return, because you're starting at a lower base. That's what the market looks at, and that makes sense. For investors, we recommend, and we do uh, own this type of portfolio, we have a mix of names that are a billion market cap and names that are two trillion market cap. So if you run the gamut, you have some protection on the capitalization side and diversification by industry sector and by multiple, how expensive is the company, is also important to consider when you're building your own portfolio. Yeah. Why small caps, big names, though, right? Uh, Shake Shack's up 54% just year to date. Congrats, Josh Brown, on that. Uh, as he uh, told us yesterday, he was adding to that. Stitch Fix is up 48%. I mean, these, some of these names um, are, you know, fairly widely held. Uh, Macy's is up 37%. You get a housing play in KB Home up 29%. Papa John's 26, Wingstop 25. Names we don't talk about every day. We should give these companies more credit. 26 is a company you own is up 24%. Yeah, 26 reported a great quarter yesterday, so it's following through. It's got lots more upside in the right space, optical, lasers, 5G. I agree with everything that Kerry said. I agree with everything Joe said. But let me take it one step further. And what you just mentioned, I think, proves out my case. I'm not really looking at the indices. I mean, it's great. I look at it in terms of just fun to look at. But I'm really bottoms up. And every stock that you mentioned meaningfully outperformed the indices. So it truly is a stock picker's market. You can add to those names small ones. Vuzix, which has gone from, from three and a half up to 15. Or you can go with a stock like Moderna, which was small cap, and now it's 70 billion. So it's really about the momentum in the fundamentals, as you, saw, as you said with 2.6, and in the others. They all have solid fundamentals. So if you don't have the ability to do your own work or have access to people that do, then buy the indices. But if you can do your own work, 
there's a lot of themes out there that are trading, whether it's 5G or some others that we'll get to. So it's thematic trading and it's single stock with idiosyncratic stories. And that's where I continue to find opportunity. I don't find bubbles. I find extremely attractive valuations. So that's my playbook now and going forward. And I'm adding to my winners as Josh did. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.